Hey Han, I'm Chloe and this is the Backspin Tutorial. My mission is to share my passion for pole dancing and make pole dancing easy to learn and accessible. This is the 27th video of the Beginner Pole Trick Tutorial Series. In order to maximize your training out of all the videos, I highly recommend you to start from the very first video of this playlist as the tricks will be a progression of the video before. The backspin is a very versatile trick. There's going to be a lot of progressions we can do from the backspin. But today, we are going to do four different leg variations. This video is mirrored for your ease of learning. I'll also have a red wristband on my right wrist and my right ankle to indicate the right side of my body if you do get confused with the directions. This trick tutorial is created for you for informational and educational purposes only and for you to enjoy learning pole dancing from the comfort of your own home. Please participate at your own risk and don't work beyond your capability and seek help or spotting when necessary. For any health concerns, please make sure to seek professional medical advice. Please also you make sure you warm up your body before you start this video. I have a warm up playlist depending on your level under the playlist, warm up, so that you can try that before you do the tricks. If you enjoy this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up so that I know to create more of these kinds of videos and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet so that you are notified every single week I upload a video. If you're looking to further your pole journey and combining tricks and dance together, then consider signing up to my online learning platform, Pole Art Bolt, where we put all the tricks together into a combo and learning an entire routine with combos and and dance together. You can find the link in the description below for further information. Alrighty, without further ado, let's get into the backspin tutorial. Radio. Now let's get into our conditioning. For our conditioning today, we are going to really work on our top arm pull because this is quite shoulder heavy. So, we are going to start off with doing our downward dogs and we are also doing our shoulder rotation exercises. So, let's start off with our first one. So you can just like sit down or stand up, whatever you want to, because we are going to just work on our arms. So, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna stand nice and tall or sit nice and tall. You're gonna start rotating your palm up Rotate it down so that your thumb is facing in and then you're going to rotate your hand all the way out. Now you're going to, when you're rotating your hand out, make sure that your thumb is facing all the way down or a little further away if you can and then you're going to pull your both hands up. So your aim here, if your palm is all the way straight, is that your thumb is facing all the way down into the floor and then making sure that your arm is at shoulder height. From here, you're gonna pull it all the way back down. So you're gonna hold for three seconds, so rotating your thumb down, three, two, one, and then rotating it down. Good, so let's try five both hands. So let, we've done two so far, we've got three more to go. All right, rotate it down, two, one, good. And hold it for three, two, one, Beautiful, all right, last one. Three, two, one. Well done, all right, shake your arms off if you need to. Well done. Let's get into our next one. We are going to do our downward dogs. So, you are going to come onto your knees. Now, from here, you're going to place both of your hands at shoulder width. Now from here, you're going to push your knee up and then you're going to come into your full downward dog. Now, if you're in this position and if you feel like you feel too much in your hamstring, then you can bend your knee slightly. Now from here, you're going to crawl your hand a little further away and then you're gonna start threading your head through the gap between your hands. Now again, if you can extend both of your legs, that is totally fine. And you might feel that extra stretch in your hamstring, you might as well stretch your hamstring then. Otherwise, if it's too much, you can bend your knees. As long as you're threading your head through this gap and you feel that tension in your shoulder. Now make sure that you're not collapsing in your shoulder, keep your arms straight. 
and then think about not collapsing in your shoulder and then so that you're not pushing all of that uh, tension in your shoulders. Push away. And then threading your arm through this gap. You're gonna hold for three, two, one. And then you can come back down. And you've got three rounds. So you're gonna push back up. Pushing your head through that gap. Three, two, one. Coming back down. And coming back up again. Three, two, one. And down. All right, last one. Three, two, one. Beautiful. Well done. And that is conditioning done. Radio, let us get into our backspin. Now, this is going to be a very spin pole tutorial, but you can do this on static as well. They both work. But I find that it does look kind of nicer and more graceful on a spin pole. So I am on a spin pole today. As I mentioned, we are going to go through four different leg variations today. So this is what a backspin looks like. This is your first leg variation. This is your second leg variation. Third leg. And fourth leg. Now, let's break down the backspin. So what you're gonna do is you're going to stand in front of the pole with your bum facing the pole. Now from here, your inside hand comes nice and high. So this is gonna be a very new grip that we haven't done in our beginner pole trick tutorial series yet. It is called a twisted grip. So with your twisted grip, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your hand nice and high. From there, you're gonna look up and all you're doing is grabbing the pole with your thumb facing up. Now, as I mentioned in our conditioning, the backspin is a bit of an abrasive one in your shoulders. So if you feel like your shoulder mobility isn't as good, make sure you keep working on your downward dog and all the conditioning exercise that we were doing before. Now, other one is to obviously keep working on your flexibility in your shoulders, if you, especially if you have tight shoulders. I have a 15 minute stretch for beginner uh, video. So if you wanna watch that one or even like the warm up, that's gonna help you open up your shoulders. So make sure you keep working on your shoulder mobility. This trick isn't gonna be for everyone, especially if your shoulders are tight. Having said that, going back. So thumb facing up, and then this is your twisted grip position. Now, what's gonna happen with your bottom hand is that it is gonna go behind your bum. Now, once it goes behind your bum, you're gonna have your index finger pointing down and then you're gonna grab the pole. So this is the grip that you want. Again, index finger pointing down and then you're gonna push in your bottom arm. Now, when you are doing your backspin, making sure that you're not over wrapping your wrist behind the pole. So your, your wrist should be facing towards you and not over wrapping this way. So commonly what happens is that you're like, you end up sort of um, wrapping your arm around the pole. So make sure that you're tucking your elbow towards you and then turning your wrist towards you as well. Now, come on, coming onto your toes, top hand comes into a twisted grip, bottom hand comes into your push. Now when you're in your um, backspin, make sure that you swing your inside leg forward, which is the same hand as your top hand. So same leg, same hand, top hand. You're gonna swing it forward and then you're gonna kick it backwards and then you're in your backspin. Now when you're in your backspin, make sure that your bum is on the same side of the pole as your top hand. So make sure that once you swing your leg forward, keep your bum on the same side of the pole as your top hand so that your bum, your right bum, uh, bum should be on the right side if your top hand is doing the right. Now once you swing your leg forward, you're gonna kick this leg backwards and then your inside leg swings forward and then there's your first leg variation. Split legs. 
Now make sure you look over your inside shoulder and then coming out. Well done. All right, let's try it on the other side. You're gonna bring your top hand nice and high, bottom hand nice and low. Make sure you're tucking your elbow in and then index finger facing down. You're gonna swing your outside leg forward, kick it back, inside leg down. And then there you have it. There is your first leg variation. Now let's move on into our second leg variation. With our second leg variation, you are going to bring your inside knee up. So, same hand positioning, swinging your outside leg forward, and then you're gonna bring your inside knee up, looking over your inside shoulder. And coming down. Well done. All right, let's try your other side. Swinging your inside leg forward, kick it back, and bring your inside knee up. Well done. Righty -o. and let's try our third leg variation. Both leg stagged. So, this is very similar to like a front stag that we've done in the past, or I should say back stag, because it's like a backspin, back stag. So, you wanna make sure that your knee is facing both at the same angle, and then you wanna make sure that your toe to knee is aligned, as such. So you're creating sort of like this S shape with your legs. Now, if you haven't watched the back sag tutorial, I highly recommend you to watch the back sag tutorial before you try this one. And that's gonna help you with sort of like your leg formation. So, kicking your outside leg forward into your stag legs. Beautiful. All right, let's try it on the other side. Swinging your outside leg forward, kick it back. And there's your stag leg variation. Now, let's try our last leg variation, legs together. So, when you are getting your legs together, make sure that you have your ankles together and then squeeze your knees together at the same time. Again, don't forget your bum should be on the same side of the pole as your top hand. So, swinging your outside leg forward, legs together, looking over your inside shoulder and coming out. Well done. All right, this is your last one. Let's try it on the other side. Legs together. Now, when you're bringing your legs together, I probably should have mentioned, you wanna kick it slightly backwards. So not entirely to your side, but if you kick it ever so slightly backwards, then it's gonna help you hold your balance as well in your spin. So, swing your outside leg forward, kick it ever so slightly backwards, and looking over your inside shoulder. Well done. Now there is all of your leg variations done in your backspin. Legs apart, one leg bent, one leg straight, both legs bent, and then both legs together. All right, let's go through some tips and common mistakes. Now there are a lot of common mistakes and tips that I really wanna go through for the backspin because this is a bit of a tricky one when you're learning it in the first place. So, first common mistake is your body positioning in your backspin. Now this is gonna be a really crucial one in order to be in the right positioning and also for you to make sure that you can spin properly. So, Again, when, if you remember, I mentioned that your bum should be on the other side of the pole. So if you keep your bum on the center, then you won't be able to come into the right positioning and then your arms are going to compensate and then it might feel even more twisty. So, if your top hand is your right, then making sure that your bum is on the right side as well. So when you are kicking your same leg forward, so top hand up, same hand, same leg forward, and then when you kick it backwards, make sure that you don't kick it and then you start swinging the other direction. So, 
You want to do this simultaneously to get into the right positioning. When you're coming into your backspin, make sure that you're looking over your bottom arm, shoulder. That way, this is going to allow you to get into the right positioning as well. So you want to swing your outside leg forward, keep looking over your inside shoulder, kick it backwards. And then that's going to help you get into the right positioning. So again, if you try to look over your top shoulder, you're going to start spinning forward in this like weird positioning. Um, this is a really, really common one, by the way. Um, so make sure that you look over your inside shoulder and then that's also going to help you with the positioning. So with your legs, make sure that your knees are facing in towards the pole, meaning your butt should also be facing away. So if you start spinning forward or if you're in the right, uh, wrong positioning, it is probably because you started spinning forward and your knee is facing the other direction. So you want to make sure that your knee is facing towards your inside shoulder. So you're here, keep facing your knee in, 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 keep it in, in, in the whole entire time. Now, with your bottom arm, again, make sure that your forearm isn't on the pole. You want to make sure that you're pushing away with your bottom hand. So squeeze your armpit. So think about not rotating your hand this way, but rotating your shoulder in this way. Again, not this way, so that your body is like really close, but then you want to rotate your hand in so that, say for example, if you have a watch on your wrist, that your face of your watch is just against your bum. Now, again, this is very abrasive on your shoulder. So if you feel like this is too much, don't overdo it. Um, make sure that you keep working on your mobility and also your flexibility in your shoulder as well in order to get into your twisted grip position. Now let's just talk hand grip as well because this is just all hand grip. Make sure that you have enough hand grip on your hands. I usually like to wash my hands with soap. Just wash it nice and well so that all the excess oil is off my hands and then I apply grip aid on top of it. Now I have all the, um, where's my words today? I have all the products that I recommend in the link in the descri description. So I'm not sponsored for any other products. So make sure you utilize those. And yeah, make sure you have a lot of hand grip for this one. You're really gonna need it. Now, if you have any questions in terms of sort of like the positioning, and if you need any further tips, you can leave a comment and then I shall do my best to get back to you as well. Now those were all the tips and common mistakes I wanted to go through. Now, just a little mindset tip for you today. I have mentioned this one in the past beginner pole trick tutorial series, but I'm just gonna reiterate because I think this is a really crucial one. Now we've tried a new grip, which is a twisted grip today. This requires a different sort of mobility that we've never tried before, and it is very shoulder heavy. Meaning, you might not have the mobility now, Obviously, if you keep working on your mobility, unless you have like a prior injury or if you have sort of like a debilitating um, sort of like physique to be able to get that sort of like weird twisted grip, this might not be the trick for you now. And that is totally fine. As I mentioned, tricks are not always going to be like every single trick you're able to get. There's gonna be tricks that you like, there's gonna be tricks that you don't like, and that is totally fine. You don't have to feel like you have to get every single trick, and you don't have to feel like you have to tick every single trick off the book. Make sure you do it at your own pace, enjoy your pole journey, and again, make sure that you are kind to yourself. Thank you so much for joining me in the backspin tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I shall see you in the very next tutorial. Bye. So, we are going to start off with doing our downward dog. One, two, because we are going to just work on our arms. Try five 
both hands. So let, we've done two so far. We've got three more to go. All right, all right, last one. You're going to push your knee up, your knee slightly. Now, start threading your head through the gap between your hands. Now, again, if you can...